When people start to talk about legacy, they often start to articulate problems associated with implementing change. This may be related to in introducing new features or fixing newly identified defects. In real terms, it manifests as increased costs and a feeling of diminished return on any financial or time investment. Large amounts of effort over a prolonged period of time result in very little change and add little value. Project stakeholders lose confidence in the system and the team maintaining it. There are a number of technical reasons why this may have become the case. The code base may be, have become brittle, too tightly coupled. The isolation within the code base has become unclear. Making changes without side effects in other areas of the application has become very complex and unexpected defects are created at the same time as new features. How would you first begin to manage a legacy code base? I would consider adopting a methodology and a set of principles that allow you to manage the symptoms and focus on resolving the root cause. Lean is a customer-centric methodology used to continuously improve any process through eliminating waste in everything you do. It is based on ideas of continuous improvement and respect for people. Lean focuses on reducing waste and although its origins are in the domain of physical manufacturing, the principles are easily transferable to the software world and have been described in this way in the Lean Startup by Eric Rees as well as the other Lean series. Some organisations are doing this naturally. However, this industry is littered with projects that have begun to show signs of uh, becoming a legacy code base. A common answer to the problem associated with legacy is to propose a complete rewrite of the system, often in an alternate technology. This does not appreciate the technical debt that has been paid down in building the functional system in the first place. A rewrite has to go through the same learning and waste to extract all the implicit and explicit functionality that the current working system already models. If you plan to run the old system while you build the new version and then switch over at some time in the future, this is a warning sign. The rewrite runs the risk of never being released as the live system is likely to continue to evolve while you're creating the new version. You then have a constant cycle of creating parity between the two versions and when you do go live you need to be 100% confident that there will be no issues or your users will start to ask, can we have the old system back? It worked. When approaching work with a legacy system, we need to maintain a clear focus on the goal and the value we are intending to add to the system. Then we need to identify where there is waste and propose measurable experiments to deal with this. A more lean approach to dealing with the legacy is to identify where change is expensive but also where improvement will have noticeable impact on reducing waste. We need to understand which areas of the legacy system are used the most and which areas change the most. We can begin by making a number of very simple assessments of each feature and code element in our legacy application, such as, is it not used? Consider removing it. If the feature or code is not there, you don't need to waste time and budget maintaining it. Is it not changing frequently? Consider leaving it untouched in its current state, as you can add no value by changing something that is working just for the sake of it. You may wish to reassess this periodically to ensure that it is still true. This leaves you with features and code that are used and waste is associated with, maintenance or change. This is where time and effort should be invested to reduce waste and deal with the problem of legacy code. To start, begin dealing with your legacy code base. You need to start by start a program of continuous improvement, or Kaizen. The term Kaizen is derived from two Japanese characters, Kai, meaning change, and Zen, meaning continuous improvement. Eliminating waste in the value stream is the goal of Kaizen, and a core lean principle. So we plan, we create a, a plan for change, identifying specifically what you want to change and how to measure the impact. Define the steps you need to make that measurable, and predict the positive result you look for. You do, you carry out that plan in, tr in a trial or test environment on a small scale under controlled conditions. This would ideally be using continuous delivery and deploying change into a realistic context. Check or study, examine the results and verify that you've improved the process. If you have, consider implementing in a broader scale. If you haven't improved the process, go back and try again. And then you act, you implement the change you've, you've verified on a broader scale. The likely things that you'll introduce to facilitate this way of working with legacy code are um, you'll introduce instrumentation that provides detailed information for the specific areas you're looking to change. 
you need to identify a metric that will uh, provide a clear indication that your actions are positive. Code level refactoring to create isolation of concerns, creating appropriate layers of abstraction to create code that is, has a single responsibility, or more accurately, a single reason to change following uh, Robert C. Martin's definition of a single responsibility principle. You will likely introduce some additional functionality to take ownership of message flows within the system and to be able to route those through um, existing or new implementations as you refactor the code. You may introduce um, architectural changes that allow functional context boundaries to be created. These may even be application boundaries, moving your legacy application from a single monolith to a microservice architecture. This will facilitate independent delivery, isolated functionality and facilitate an increased speed of change whilst maintaining stability. When you begin to isolate elements of functionality, they become more generic and reusable. This also means that they may be solved very well in other software or services. This means that it may be more effective to adopt the use of third-party software and services rather than build them. This will allow you to release the value of the feature more quickly and also reduce the maintenance and improvement costs that, to a license or a subscription fee. Obviously, should your requirement change beyond those of the third-party software and service, you can then better understand the costs associated with building your own. Is a complete software rewrite always the wrong thing to consider when dealing with a legacy code base? In my opinion, yes. However, without context, I can't comment on your exact situation. What is absolutely true, though, is that rewrites involve large financial and time investment and introduce significant risk. I believe that working with legacy features and code bases using lean principles in this way allow you to better manage the cost and risk while ensuring you're adding incremental value to the system.